good evening everyone uh, this is lokesh i have been working with agi games for more than 2.5 years today i'm going to share some insights on uh, with the micro front end how we are uh, how we build uh, apps with micro front end yeah i think we can go ahead yeah before getting into uh, micro front end let's talk about the monolithic micro front end that uh, the usual architecture look so before a uh, micro front end there used to be a monolith where every there will be a one repo and the front end and the back end and the data bus are connected to and all members in the team will directly access the repo and it's kind of a difficult for them to maintain and uh, uh, make changes basically so uh, yeah then it got evolved like front end and the back end where the front end repo was se separated and the back end also separated so this way back end and the front end team can work separately and can implement their uh, innovations and they can try something with their own and then with the micro services the back end has separated into multiple services with the aggregation layer like graphql and everything so that the back end team got separated and they can work independently not depending on the other teams but still the front end team has single repo and they were uh, depending on the other teams so with uh, micro services there is no micro service for the front end then we got then we got the uh, end to end um, uh, teams with micro front end so the it, it turns the horizontal organization into vertical organization so with the micro front end teams can uh, work independently like for say we have a team uh, search and team product and they can work so have a separate repo and they can work independently with their back end team and with this yeah we have a lot of benefits and with the micro front end we can say so basically uh, there will be a container where uh, it will decide which app or which mfe to show so it, the there are multiple mfe we can have so the app which we are going to look into have uh, marketing and dashboard and all so it builds the marketing app mfe is built based on the react the dashboard app uh, built based on uh, view and the auth app based built based on react so the container is will be in react and it will decide like which app to uh, render and which app which the uh, app the uh, user is hitting so there are multiple implementation strategies that we can use so basically we have like top 3 so the build time integration is kind of a compile time integration where uh, where the mfe like uh, where the marketing team uh, build their product and deployed in de i mean build their product and release just a npm package so while uh, compiling them in the container team will add as a dependency to it so that whenever they uh, build so it will add it into a dependency and they can use it as a package and the runtime integration would be the micro front ends are deployed into some urls so bundled up and deployed into some urls so that while runtime uh, when the user navigates to the micro front ends they can basically uh, get the app from the url so there are server integrations while sending uh, js to uh, to the container they can decide whether to include the particular mfe or not so this would be the uh, web container webpack configuration which gonna display the mfes so the name would be the container we can give it whatever name we want so the remotes uh, will contain which app we are gonna target and which app we are gonna enter so basically it starts with marketing and the domain will be where the so in this webpack in this app we have uh, followed a uh, runtime integration so these are will be the urls which we are going to hit when we navigating to marketing or our dashboard basically so these are the remote entry files which will help you to get the whole app and this will be the uh, mfes uh, configuration file so the name will shows the uh, which mfe it is and the file name which it has uh, details about the app which file being exposed so exposes a section contains which we are exposing as 
in what name like if we are exposing here over a da dashboard app which the file which we are exploring is a uh, uh, bootstrap file and the shared section contains like instead of like a fetching react or like the difference is multiple times so the shared section will be like uh, when we when it is being shared it will fetch react or the packages dependencies only one time and the usage would be like shown in the uh, right side of the uh, image so which consists of mount function so why mount function instead of like directly importing the app instead of that we have uh, import like imported a mount function so for say we are using react now maybe we can use uh, nextjs and view tomorrow so instead of like importing the direct component we can import the mount function which will kind of a utility function so that is being imported from the dashboard app and we are giving reference to the mount function which will uh, use that a uh, div or reference and basically it renders the app the left side of the image shows like it is being uh, imported lazily so that it won't uh, it will load on demand instead of like rendering all those mfes at once the main purpose would be like it is uh, too lazy load and yeah this generate class names will come into that later so the sections which contain like uh, general like routers and react so this is the app which we which i built actually so the header would be the container app so this will be the home page which is coming from the uh, basically coming from the uh, marketing app so here we you have seen the marketing uh, mfp and the apps the header would be coming from the container so basically so what so module federation does everything for you so we have a products mfp which has index.js file which we wrote and the webpack uh, what it does is it will bundle everything for you so that we can run the application in isolation instead of like uh, we can run it on our own to uh, for the development purpose instead of running the whole application we can run our own mfp and we can implement our uh, features the module federation will uh, create uh, multiple files the first file would be like remote entry file where it uh, it contains list of uh, components or uh, files that are available from the mfp and uh, the subsequent files are like that are being exported like so we have exported our source dot index file in the button js file so these are the files that we are exporting so it will have a multiple uh, uh, files that are being exported so yeah there are like few uh, things we have to consider so there is an uh, css issue which may you face when you are uh, using a, a css in js libraries like uh, so when we write a, when we are giving padding two pixels to the headers in the js file so basically it will uh, give a class names to so we are using make styles uh, from material ui and uh, when we use that so in the js file it will give the class name as a make styles header 2 in the cs it will create a make styles header 2 and the padding would be 2 axel 2 px so that it will apply in the component but the way it works in the production it is not the same like whatever you the name you give it won't be uh, it won't be rendered as like it won't be given as it is so the in the when while bundling up it will it is making the class names at jss1 jss2 jss3 to make the to minimize the bundle size actually so that if we have the products mfe and the cart mfe and we have given uh, in the prod version we are giving jss1 and jss2 when we are uh, when we are rendering these two mfes basically we will have the two uh, same class names so that it will conflict for say we have a jss1 which has a padding of uh, 5 pixels and we have a in cart we have a jss1 same class name which has a 20 pixels so it will overwrite basically so that to eliminate this we have a create uh, generate cl class names from material ui so which it will do, which it will do a, it will append uh, basically the names which we are giving so for say we are uh, using production prefix as a ma so for marketing i have used as a ma so it will uh, append these names in before jss1 so that we can eliminate handle our css uh, in the mfps and the benefits of micro front end would be like faster development and deployment instead of depending on the other teams and other 
team's requirements and the adoption of different technologies for say we want to explore uh, our mfe into with different apps like for say uh, next js and uh, if we want to make it uh, make it use as a view so we can do that with the different technologies and stacks and the maintenance would be very easy instead of like having a large code base it would be a simple code base for each team and the freedom to innovate yeah obviously like uh, when you want to innovate or when you want to try something with the multi- with the larger code base and the with larger teams it would be very difficult you have to get the approval and you have to discuss with multiple teams to get so with the mfe you can innovate and you can implement new strategies and you can showcase other other teams so that they can also do that and the reusability so for say if we are uh, creating an app which we can use it in uh, across multiple modules we can use that instead of like building it again and again and the scalability would be like very much higher because you can the app can grow as much as it can and the perma- the performance would be also good so instead of like loading everything in a single uh, file and lo- uh, loading the whole app in one go we can with the mfes we can load it like uh whenever the user navigates to particular app and there are few considerations which we have to take care of the security yeah so we have to make sure the mfes are being consumed by the correct containers and the routing and navigation would be a kind of a difficult thing so because we have a react router and the browser router which uses a browser router and the memory router as well so there are few considerations which we have to take and uh, the state manager would be kind of uh, like a difficult one which we have to also take care but yeah and the consistency in the user experience also would be a uh, one of the good thing we have to take care of and the deployment and versioning like uh, instead of like uh, deploying when we are deploying a multiple version we have to uh, verify that it is being uh, the correct version is being consumed and the error handling like whenever uh, the mfes are not being loaded we have to uh, handle that properly yeah i think that's it for today